Hi, my name is Jerry Jin, and what I'd like to do today is to tell you about uh, the 369 vibrational energy of the Taurus structure, and the Taurus structure is a creation vehicle. And in so doing, I'll also talk a little bit about uh, uh, GANS, Ormus, Plasma, Monatomic Matter, which is of this uh, same structure. First, uh, let's talk a little bit about 369. Tesla is well known for his quote, if you only knew that magnificence of three, six, and nine, that you would have the key to the universe. What did Tesla mean when he said that? In order to understand that, let's talk a little bit about the uh, torus shape and the torus uh, structure. The torus is a donut-shaped whirlpool vortex. And according to Arthur Young, uh, that is the only manner by which self-sustained motion can exist in a given medium. And you find the torus shape in virtually everything, uh, in electromagnetic fields of an atom, a seed, a human, a planet, solar system, galaxy, and the universe. It's a universal uh, structure. Let's go back a little bit further uh, to how all this started uh, in terms of uh, formation of matter. And let's go to the works of Walter Russell when he had uh, a vision that was uh, described uh, to him the nature of uh, creation. And it explains the saying, as above, so below. And it has to do with the formation of matter. It has to do with creation. And the vision he saw was that it is light. And light in a centripetal motion going towards a center. In fact, two sets of lights, uh, you know, call that male and female, uh, both centripetal motion moving towards a center that is the basis of creation. And creation is a cycle, and the cycle is creation and decay. So um, the compression into the center is the formation of matter, and the unwinding of the uh, centripetal motion of light uh, is a breakdown of matter. So you can call this radiative uh, uh, of electric field, and you talk to talk about it in terms of gravitative electric field. So gravitative, radiative, gravitative, magnetic, light, and you can call light red and blue. Uh, and that is the basis of, uh, of matter formation. And uh, matter decay is based upon the centrifugal motion, which is counterclockwise. Uh, from the center, and that is decay, whereas centripetal motion is a clockwise uh, motion. Then let's talk a little bit about the uh, work of uh, Maron Keshe, uh, who described uh, the nature of GANs and created a new term, GANs, and I'll talk about that in a separate uh, YouTube. Uh, specifically, what is Ormus, what is GANS, what is Nano, what is Plasma. But it is fundamental uh, to the nature of, of what matter is. And this picture describes that. Uh, and what uh, Keshe talks about is, in fact, uh, gravitative, uh, which is the flowing in uh, motion, uh, which is the creation of matter and the flowing out. Uh, which is a magnetic nature. And he talks about maggrav uh, fields. So these form fields, and they are the nature of the GANs and nano uh, structures of matter. And uh, when you hear about monatomic matter, uh, when they, people talk about Ormus, uh, this is a good explanation for this. So it has the vortex in, vortex out motion of the torus. 
serendipity occurred um, and synchronicity occurred when I was listening to a lecture by Bob Whitehouse, uh, who was talking about the Arthur Young theory of process and talking about the torus and showed a picture of the torus and showed the picture that's shown in uh, this slide. Here you see a cross section of a torus in the field surrounding the torus. And when I saw that, I immediately said, okay, there's a 369 there. And in the red, uh, you see the six, in the nine, you see, in the uh, blue, you see the nine, and the three are parts of the infinity portion of, of that uh, structure that is shown there. So I figured that had to do with uh, uh, the torus. And let's see what happens uh, after this. I drew the structure of that cross section of the torus and I know biogeometry, so I checked the energies of BG3 to see if it created any harmony energies of BG3. And I'll have a separate talk on what BG3 is. And there is nothing there. But I also knew that centripetal motion clockwise was a basis of creation. So I drew the nine and the six structure that is uh, there uh, in that torus, uh, the nine you see here and the uh, six you see here. So I drew that uh, with a clockwise rotation and lo and behold, we have BG3 energies. Uh, I had not yet discovered uh, the new energy of 369, so we, I wasn't calling that. But later on, I discovered and uh, have ways of now detecting a 369. So the structure gives both BG3 and 369 energies. Even the numbers themselves, if they're written in uh, this particular order and you write the six with clockwise motion of the six and clockwise motion of the nine, you get the, uh, the BG3 and the 369 uh, energies. And I know the universe looks at uh, not the uh, Arabic numerals, but looks at units. So if you write lines or dots, uh, uh, three, six, nine, uh, and do that in that order, you get the BG3 and 369 energies. And with regard to uh, the yin yang figure, that's also associated with uh, creation and balance of creation. And uh, there is within the inner structure uh, a counterclockwise and clockwise motion. And if you draw that, if you just take a picture, uh, from the literature of yin yang, it won't have any energies, but as soon as you draw that inner clockwise, counterclockwise motion of both uh, creation and uh, decay, you do have uh, the 369 and BG3 energies. And many of you will know about Rodin's uh, vortex math and know that uh, uh, extensions of that math, uh, in fact, form the torus. And uh, so there's a there's nine uh, numbers uh, surrounding a circle. And if you double the numbers, uh, one plus one is two, two plus two is four, etc., and get the digital root of it, you get a structure. And that structure, when drawn, gives you BG3 and 369. So basically, this is still the, the, uh, the torus. And if you uh, use units, uh, you have one unit, two units, four units, and if you lay that out in this manner, that has BG3 and 369 energies. And the other uh, uh, symbol of creation is Ohm. And Ohm is the, in the Sanskrit version of Ohm, is drawn here, but the Sanskrit version of Ohm is just 369, as shown on the right. Uh, and Ohm by itself has 369 and BG3 energies. Bagua, which is uh, known in the Asian uh, literature, a symbol of creation. And the structures of uh, dashes and lines, uh, you can get these uh, from looking at the tetrahedron and how the tetrahedron uh, forms matter. So it, again, it comes back to the creation symbol. And the Reiki power symbol also has BG3 and 369. But this just shows the clockwise motion of uh, creation. 
and that's uh, and you always draw this in a clockwise motion from the center uh, in the uh, Asian uh, written language, and that has that energy. So uh, the structures and symbols all have uh, the three six nine and BG three energies. Okay, how do we detect 369 energies? Or is it 369 BG3 the same? No, they're not the same. Uh, they're very distinctly different. One is the creation energy, and one is the, uh, the energies of the environment, uh, harmonization of, of the environment. So the detection of it is uh, quite simple. Use resonance, and I talked about resonance in one of my previous talks. And so you have a pendulum, you have my flower uh, salt dough ball as a pendulum, neutral pendulum, and you can just uh, write in three lines, six lines, nine lines. It will now resonate with the energy of 369, or they'll resonate with the energy of the torus. And here's another structure. This is not a precious uh, stone or anything. It's just a stone, and I write, uh, or I engrave uh, with a carbide pen 369 on it. I could do it on a couple of times on around the, uh, the pendulum. And now that pendulum will detect 369. And typically, if you hold the pendulum roughly about one and a half inches uh, from the, the thumb and index finger to the uh, uh, weight, uh, and just uh, get, uh, cause a to and fro motion to occur. Anytime there's 369 energies there, uh, the pendulum will then start rotating clockwise. So that is how you measure uh, the 369 energies. And we'll talk more about that when we talk about the GANs and Ormus uh, and nano and plasma structures. Um, I have other YouTubes uh, in this series, and um, you may want to look at that uh, because uh, one uh, is gives you some background uh, with regard to why I created these YouTubes uh, because I wanted to people to understand the concepts of resonance, uh, to be able to feel the energies uh, within their bodies and feel how the dowsing and radius seizure works and how the energy flows from the hand, from the subconscious mind, or from the right brain into the hand. And uh, you can now be able to detect things that uh, normally you don't see. Uh, the left brain looks at uh, the sensory stuff. The right brain can see stuff that uh, the left brain cannot. We talked about how to optimize the feeling of these energies and making everything uh, be able to pick up the resonance of energies, and that's in securing your resonance. Uh, we talked about uh, in one of my YouTube's personal wavelength and its applications to knowing foods, drugs, or supplements are good or not good for you. Uh, and, and another uh, uh, YouTube, I talked about the I am vibrational level. You can actually measure your vibrational level. Uh, and um, you can de determine that it goes up uh, when you're at that uh, I am essence. We just talked about the 369 subtle energies. And the remaining uh, YouTubes will talk about GANs, detecting GANs, and the fields that GANs forms. And we'll talk a little bit about biogeometry. So thank you for listening to this um, talk. And I shall stop the recording. Thank you.